Hey folks, we just wanted to give you some pointers on uh, free camping. Yep, we've stayed at a lot of free camping places. Uh, two of the most common are Walmart parking lots and Cracker Barrel parking lots. We haven't been denied at any, we always ask. Uh, I, we will say in California, that's when we had our biggest difficulty because both Walmart and Cracker Barrel said, didn't say expressly no that we couldn't, but they said that they do share their parking lot with other businesses and they could tell us no. Um, the gal at Cracker Barrel was much more inviting than the one at Walmart, so we decided to stay at the Cracker Barrel because she didn't mention we have lots of RVs stay here and none of them have said any problems in the morning when they come in for breakfast. Another place to go is Cabela's. We stayed at a very nice Cabela's in Georgia where they even had a dump station. It was either $5 to use or if you went inside and bought something, just ask at checkout for the dump code and then you can use it essentially for free. And uh, Bass Pro yes. as well. Uh, we have they're a connected with Cabela's. Yep. So they, they may as well allow you to park for the night. Yep. We haven't used any Bass Pro shops as of yet. Right. But we've heard that you can. Yep. And uh, another one that we haven't used is Camping World. Um, online, I see a lot of debate on whether or not they still allow that. Right. So, but yep. in our travels, we really haven't come across any. So they just haven't been convenient for us. But at one time, I heard that they were. Yes. So. We still have yet to test that there. Yeah. One that we've used a lot, and you've already seen quite a bit, is uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Also, uh, Forest Service, and there's uh, Corps of Engineers Land. We we haven't used any Corps of Engineers Land yet, but we have used lots of BLM and Forest Service. Basically, all of them have been wonderful. And if you want to find free campsites, there's freecampsites.com, and there's also Campendium. I'll try to put links in the description, but we've used that heavily to find both um, free parking lots and free campgrounds, like BLM land. Uh, there is one thing I wanted to mention, honey. Wasn't there a snafu that you had with the uh, coordinates to get to different locations? Yes. When you're using Campendium and free campsites, when you're looking for BLM land, they don't really give you an address. You have to use GPS coordinates. So I learned a lot real fast about how to do GPS coordinates. So kind of brush up on that. And not all GPS coordinates are really good. We had some in Silverton, Colorado, where the coordinates were a hot mess. We couldn't find it. When we did finally find it, it wasn't where it should have been and it wasn't accessible like they claimed it was. So it's not perfect, but we've used those sites and we found some amazing campgrounds like the Lovell Canyon in Nevada. Um, oh, there was the one in Barstow, California. We've got videos on that too. So those are a lot of fun, but then you can get some locks for your camper, like, um, like a ball hitch lock. We have a lock so then you can actually drop off your camper on the BLM land and go do what you want to do. So that somebody can't hook up to your camper and pull it away. That's why she's saying it. Yes. Another thing, folks, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, another thing you want to make sure of is that you read folks' descriptions. If you go on to Campendium or something and you say, hey, this site looks like one I want to check out, and you punch in the coordinates, read the description, what other people say, because it may be too rocky or hilly for your rig. Yes. You want to make sure you can fit in it and that your truck or your car can pull your camper there. Otherwise, you don't want to get there and get stuck or something. Yeah, so what we've learned is when you're when we do get to some of this BLM land, you'll typically have like a main drive and then like some little pull-offs, and that's where the little camping areas are. I get out of the truck and I run into those to make sure that our rig can even fit or turn around in there because we've gotten into some situations where subs have to back out Good thing I'm real good at that, sir. That's true. You got good fast. I'm straight my non existent time. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of good free campsites. Um, we haven't done any free camping where you meet up with somebody and just park in their drive. That is another option. We haven't been able to use that yet. They call that mooch docking. Mooch docking. <laughs> but those are some real good basics. 
Oh, another one we've used a lot of is rest areas. But <coughs> not all rest areas will allow that. You need to check each individual state. Um, we've stayed some in Wisconsin, I believe. Was it Wyoming another good one? I think Wyoming was. Wyoming. Uh, Here in Alabama, Alabama, what are they? Alabama's a no-go, but we're coming into Mississippi and they allow it. And what's the one you said Louisiana is not? Louisiana doesn't allow it. I I believe, yes, Texas does allow it. They're one of the they really do. good yes, ones. Texas is good for some free camping, as is um, out west. It's just really good for BLM camping. And California actually was really good for BLM. Yes, but not parking lots. But not parking lots. I don't, I can't remember if you can stay at a rest area in, in California. <laughs> I can't remember either. But some of them have hour limits, like an eight-hour max. Some have four and two-hour maxes, right. so I guess it's good for a nap. Tennessee is two. I yep, Tennessee is a two, two-hour two max. Yeah. At the, uh, the rest area. Rest areas, yep. So, yep, just go online and check out your rest areas in your state or wherever you're visiting.